I've had this big box behind me sitting on my shop floor for about a week now and I thought today was a fantastic day to open it up and see what's inside. So stick around. Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything and welcome back to the shop. Today I have something a little more interesting than usual to do. I have to open this box behind me. This is a Muse 3D riser and rotary uh, assembly so that I can both engrave and cut taller items as well as round items such as tumblers. So what I'll do is a quick unboxing. I won't drag you to, through too much and get everything set up. And uh, if we have time, we'll do a quick project and see if everything works. So with that, let's get going. So we're ready to crack this open. Before I do, uh, I'll just provide a little disclaimer. The FSL had nothing to do with it. Uh, they're not a sponsor in any way. So uh, any opinions you hear will be my own. And if it works great, I'll tell you. If it doesn't, I'll tell you that too. Uh, to be honest, I have never seen one of these. I've never used one of these. And uh, it's a surprise for everybody. So uh, with that, let's get, let's get cutting and we'll see what's inside this box. So I mounted the laser on top of the riser. Uh, I, I'll post a picture. The rotary tool is sitting in the bottom of the laser. Now, just a couple of cautions before you, you get going here, if you are buying one of these. The, make sure when you plug, before you plug the stepper motor in for the rotary tool that you turn the power off on the laser uh, because if you plug a stepper motor in while there's power, you can sometimes blow the stepper drivers and that would probably be a fairly expensive operation uh, to repair that and that definitely wouldn't be covered under warranty, I would suspect. So uh, just a note there. Okay, so I popped into RE3 and first thing we need to do is enable the rotary tool and the way to do that is to go into settings and we click this rotary tab and turn it on. And it'll tell you down here that the rotary tool is on and positioning is now set for relative. And if you go look at the laser setting, you'll see laser positioning is relative. It's locked in, we can't even change it. So we're ready to, we're ready to go with that. So we can save that. And what I did was load, I'm gonna en engrave this on a wine glass. And so I just have some relatively uninspiring saying here. I just threw something together quick in Inkscape. Now, because our glass is lying sideways in the laser, first thing we need to do is rotate this so that it prints in the right direction so that the top of the glass is here and the pedestal is down here. Now, what I've noticed, and I think this is peculiar to, to my rotary setup, and I may actually rewire the stepper motors be, uh, stepper motor because it's actually rotating in the wrong direction. So in order to make this print properly on the, on the surface of the glass, I need to flip it backwards. And it, I'm, I don't know if that's uh, the intent. I just have a feeling my stepper motor was uh, connected uh, in the opposite direction. Stepper motors are just two pole or two coil motors and if the current goes through the opposite direction it'll go in the reverse so uh, no biggie but I'll print it this way for now I'll engrave it on the glass and uh, we're ready to go we'll give that a try next we have to go and set up the laser and we'll do that now okay so it's a bit crowded over here but I'll, I'll try and get all of this into one one shot and hopefully I don't get too too much in the way so what we need to do is, since we're now in relative positioning, uh, we need to move the laser and, and effectively reset the home position. And the way we do that, if you go to the home screen on the laser, there's this locked button. And what that does is releases the, the laser head so we can now move it. And what I'm gonna do is move it over here and position it so that it's right on the, the uh, guide laser, the red dot, is right on the end of the shaft for the 
for the center position, the, the roller in the center. And once I have that, what I'm effectively saying is that's my home position. So I can just hit the lock again and we're ready to go. And I'll put a glass in there and uh, we'll, we'll start our job and we'll see what happens. Okay, pop back into RE3 before we do the laser cut and you'll see why when you see my final uh, output from, from this project where I actually started this job and then flipped her over to the other side of the glass to start it again and do it properly. So uh, if you look at, if you do a perimeter run, you'll see the red laser dot moving around and, and this is the, the area that will get engraved. Now, if I stop here, it'll always stop at, at wherever my home position is defined and I'll help you out here because you're going to run into this problem. If I look at my project, you'll see that the relative positions start at the top left. So this is the top left corner of the project. And if we look at the gantry, you want to write these numbers down because this is where your project has to be positioned, the upper left corner of it. Now, if you're, um, sorry, if you're anywhere but uh, the United States and some other third world country, you wouldn't understand what these inches are. But uh, so um, FSL, if you're listening, if I'm, if my project is in is in millimeters, then you know this thing should also be in millimeters, just to make it easy. But for now, I'll, I'll switch it to inches. And what I want to do is make sure that when I select this, it is sitting, its upper left corner is sitting at that position. So what I want to do is just grab this and make it 8.94. And we want to make the Y position 5.059. And that will guarantee that, that your uh, work artwork is in the place it should be and if I run the perimeter scan again you'll see that the red dot is following my selection there so just a bit of a trap to make sure that uh, you're aware of uh, and uh, once you're you know once you're happy with that if your project is in millimeters although at this point it really doesn't matter but uh, you could switch your project back to millimeters if you if you needed to um, the other Thing since I'm here is uh, you could also say set it to the center so in which case that center dot right or that red dot right now is in the center and I could just position my uh, my artwork there and if I did a scan again you'd see I didn't quite get it in the center but uh, if you were doing a raster of some sort that might be more useful but for now I'll just leave it at top left and uh, then I'll do my, uh, my laser engraving. And uh, as I said, you'll see where I uh, made a mistake the first time because I wasn't paying attention to this. Um, this is honestly something that should be uh, the default when you're in relative mode. Relative should be always relative to the home position and there should be some kind of smart layout for whenever I load this PDF file, it should just kind of automatically be put there, but it doesn't seem to be. So I assembled everything. The riser was pretty much assembled. Putting the bottom plate on was pretty simple. Assembling the rotary tool was really actually straightforward. It looks complicated, but it was only, I think, eight screws by the time I was done. And it's in the laser. It works, it rotates things quite well without any apparent slippage. A couple of nits that I have around quality and just shipping. On the riser case itself, there were actually two screws missing and I'll 
put a picture up above here. It's not terrible. I mean, it is because it's just a quality thing, but I had a couple of flathead screws to put in it. The other things are related to the rotary assembly itself. There was a couple of damaged spots. One was just some marked paint on the back, but again, it's just it moved around in shipping so they may have to look at the packaging a bit better. A more serious one is the locking knob and again I'll post a picture up above here. The locking knob was actually bent so I had to kind of unbend it. It's still not perfect but it clearly got banged around in shipping and uh, it works but it just seems a bit odd that that would happen. And last thing, when I plugged the stepper motor into the laser, the connector for the stepper, uh, the rotary stepper, it's not really mounted very well uh, inside the laser, the one it mates into. Uh, it's really just stuck there with a tiny mounting sticker and uh, guaranteed if yours is like that, the first thing that's gonna happen is uh, that thing will pop off so I'm gonna replace it with something better. The irony is there's actually a hole for that Molex connector in the, in the metal sheet metal itself. You can see it there in the photo. And that should have been where it goes. And I not, I'm not sure why it's not there, but um, it just, again, seems odd. It doesn't really matter because what I plan to do is when I pull the rotary tool out is to just leave that stepper motor wire in there. There's plenty of room in there. So rather than trying to re reroute that wire every time you put the rotary tool in there, it's just as easy to leave the wire there. I'll keep you posted as I use the rotary tool uh, a bit more. If I run into more problems or I find out any interesting information that'll be useful to you, uh, as it stands, my kind of 30 second review is, it's a good tool, seems to work all right. It's pretty easy to use and I'll play around with it and can maybe do a video if people want, leave a comment below. Anyway, we'll call that a video. And as always, you can use my coupon code if you do want to buy a Muse laser. Please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.